Friday at Pizza Flicks. In a town run by women, dangerous Dame Marie Windsor rules the roost as saloon owner Iron May McLeod. This 1952 Wild Western was the first movie by Halco Productions and co-stars the Adams Family's Uncle Fester as gunslinger Peyote Bill. They always say that on the frontier, men are men. But I'll bet you'd never guess that women are women out here, too. Ever hear of Calamity Jane or Big Nose Kate? Bell Star? Crazy Horse Lil? <laughs> the weaker sex. Why, those little old gals could hold their own against a whole crowd of men. How do I know? Quite a story about that. Started in a little mining town, Silver Creek, a few years back. Did you make the deposit? Yeah. What's going on? Got the right time, Danny? Yep. If I know Chirawaka Charlie, he, he'll, be, he'll be poking his nose in here any second. No. One steadies the nerves, and two slows you down just a mite. How are you betting on the shooting? Any odds? Two to one on Bill. Just come in to say goodbye, Woody. I'm leaving. And let Silver Creek's only doctor leave town without buying him a drink. Thanks very much. So you're really leaving us, eh, Bob? Mm -hmm. Well, I can't say that I blame you. If business keeps on like this much longer, I'll be pulling out myself. Too bad you didn't get to Silver Creek a couple of years ago when things were really humming. Oh, no, no, thanks, Woody. I've made up my mind. Besides, I studied internal medicine. The only internal disease anyone gets around here is lead poisoning. <laughs> Kind of sick of probing for bullets. If you don't leave town in a hurry, you, you may get one more lead poisoning case. Who? Paiute Bill or Cherub Walker Charlie. I don't know which. They're going to shoot it out any minute now. What are they fighting about? Oh, something about a horse. You know these gunslingers? Bill thinks he's fast. Charlie thinks he's faster. So there's only one way to find out. Seems kind of silly to me. Yeah, I guess it does. Hey, Doc. If you're leaving, you better come. The stage is ready to pull out. Be right with you. Well, guess I better be going. So long, Woody. Good luck, Doc. Sorry, nobody's leaving for a while. The stage. That's too bad.
Hiya, Bill. Well, trail walk of Charlie. Somebody told me you were leaving town by noon. Now, who could have said a thing like that? Then you're not going? Uh-uh. Well, the clock strikes 12. It's all right with me. And the last stroke. Might as well finish this. No use wasting good liquor. Ought to lay off it, Bill. People say it shortens your... to draw it at all, just shot through the bottom of it. It makes me feel a whole lot better. You know, I knew that this gun-toting was bound to go scientific. This proves it. You not only got to practice it, you got to keep studying all the time. You know, just like medicine, eh, Doc? Not as hot as you, Bill. I see what you mean. Here's your patient, Doc. Better use my office. Got another one here for you, Doc. A girl. She was hit by a piece of glass. It's nothing. It's just a scratch. Well, you might as well come along, too. I gotta wait for the next stage anyway. Next time you practice your profession. Okay, just one thing, Doc. Yeah? This isn't gonna slow me down, you know, uh, leave me stiff. Well, I don't think so. Nick the bone a little, but if you give it time, it'll heal. Well, it better. He had me worried for a minute. Thanks a lot for patching up the old sidewinder, Doc. Sorry about you missing the stage. Fifty dollars? That's all right. He works for me. I'll take it out of his pay. Huh? <laughs> See you around. Up in Silver Creek. Five, get you six. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I guess you're next. This really isn't anything. You never can tell. No use taking a chance on infection. Unbutton your shirt. Happen to have a name? What? Oh, Beth Larrabee. I'm Bob Ridgeway, MD. Is that right what he said about your leaving town? Not only town, I'm leaving the whole country. I'm going back home to Kansas City. But why? We need doctors here. Yeah, and doctors need practices. You don't find them in a ghost town. Well, I know a town who needs a doctor. Bad. Lasma Harris. Lasma Harris? It's uh, Spanish for the women, isn't it? It's a funny name for a town. Well, you'll get a doctor somewhere. Oh, but you don't understand. It's Sourdough Smitty. He's the bartender at the Paradise Saloon. He's very sick. Uh, we think he has pneumonia. How long? Three days. Well, if he's got pneumonia, he'd either be dead or past the crisis by the time I'd get there. So either way, he wouldn't need me. Well, you wouldn't let uh, him... Goodbye, have... Miss Larrabee. I have to make arrangements for the next stage. I know we gotta leave Silver Creek, boss, but you don't want to locate there. Not Los Mujeres. Oh, there you are, Paiute. Huh? You're the luckiest man in the world. I never thought I'd leave Silver Creek without having you in my court at least once. Today, you almost made it. 
Yeah, I know, but it was self-defense, Judge. He'd draw it on me first. Yes, I know. That's what the witnesses said. But it seems that whenever a gun goes off, you are not very far away. I heard you're leaving town soon, too, Judge Dixon. Is that true? This is the last session of the circuit court in Silver Creek. I recommended a town to be the new seat, just waiting for approval from Washington. Yes, everybody will be pulling out pretty soon. I'm leaving myself. Where are you going to locate? I haven't decided. Well, good luck to you, Woody. So long, Bill. Good man, the judge. Maybe uh, a little too good. You say not lost, Moharis. Why? I rode through there once. Nothing but women. They run the whole town, everything. Doesn't sound so bad. No, you should see. Man rides in there for a good time, and, and female card sharps and gamblers take him for every dollar he's got. Anybody wearing trousers don't stand a chance in Los Mujeres. There's a lady gambler who runs the whole shebang. She's tougher than any two men you ever met. You can uh, draw on a man or use your fist, but uh, how do you fight a woman? What's this harpy's name? Oh, she ain't no harpy. Her name's McLeod. Iron May McLeod. May McLeod. You know her? No. But I have a feeling I'd like to. Everybody out, one at a time, and keep your hands high. Just do exactly what you're told, and nobody gets hurt. Doc Ridgeway, over here. Throw down the doc's bag. The rest of you get back in the coach. All right, get it out of here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Must want a doctor awfully bad, Miss Larrabee. Get the other horse, Curly. Are we going somewhere? Lost my hairs. But I told you, I'm not interested. Well, we are, and you'd better be. If your town's such an opportunity for a doctor, how come you've got a kidnap one? Well, let's just say I like the way you took care of Paiute Bill. Oh, you can tell by the way I take out a bullet that I can cure a case of pneumonia. You're better than the professors at the medical school. <laughs> All set. Get his bags. All right, get on. Promise not to try anything. We won't tie your hands. Sure. I guess Kansas City can do without me for a while. All right. Let's go.
need is a new bartender, not a doctor. Iron Mayo want to see you. should have a maid. It was written that way in the Book of Fame, where Cupid's little dart had landed in my heart. There's something I should say, and I can't wait. Crazy over you, c, -c crazy over you. My heart skips a beat every time that we meet. I stammer, I stutter, and then I repeat that I'm crazy over you. Crazy over you. You baited your hook with a come hither look, and I'm caught She's up She's beautiful. In Who is she? My sister, Ellen. Who's that? That's Iron May, my boss. I stutter, I'm out on my feet, go crazy over you. over you. We play the game, and the stakes were high, and I had to pay with my heart. All right, boys, the gambling tables are open. Get your picks and shovels, girls. The gold rush is on. May, You're I the new bartender, I suppose. Well, I'm afraid you've got... Now, you work from 11 a.m. to 4 a.m. You have one day a week off. You're supposed He's to... He's a doctor, a... May. I brought him from Silver Creek. You're a little late, Doc. You just buried your patient. That's what I try to tell her, but she wouldn't listen. May, I wanted to... Well, who's this? The doctor. Your sister brought him, Ellen, for Smitty. I hope you told him we can use a doctor here anyway. That's what I asked him to come for. Yeah, at the point of a gun. It's all right with me. If he'll take orders. Rosie, clear out the storehouse next door. Fix it up for the doc's office. You go with Curly. He'll find you quarters. Mind if I stick around, look the place over? If you want to. But don't see too much. There's a man in the street with a medicine show. Yeah? He's got four girls with him. Come on, Ellen. I am now holding in my hand the greatest boon ever conferred on mankind. The greatest elixir ever formulated for the assuagement of all human ills. Blackwood bomb, ladies and gentlemen, the old Indian anodyne. Its origin is lost in antiquity, but its magic formula handed down from squaw's son to squaw's son by the sorcerers of the noble Blackfoot tribe. The secret of this remarkable substance was passed on to me by one who passed on. That noble redskin nostrum formulator, Chief Muff Maul. Spelled backwards, that's wampum. It cures everything. Gout, cattle bloat, <laughs> glanders, shingles, pink eye, saddle sores, or what have you. 
You see, I learned the hard way a long time ago. Out here in the West, a girl doesn't have a chance. A man can give her any kind of a job, pay her whatever he feels like, and then tell her she's lucky to get it. You know, that's right. I made up my mind the only way I was going to get a break was to climb in the driver's seat, beat the men at their own game, be even smarter and tougher than they were. You know, it may be a man's world outside, but it stops at Los Mahara city limits. What a setup. You know, I've dreamed about places like this, but I never thought I'd see one. Sounds too good to be true. Maybe it does, but it works. We've made this town the only place in the West where a girl can get a decent break. And the men work for us, and we give them what we think they're worth. Well, they work that cheap. <laughs> <laughs> well, you girls know what I expect of you. If you don't think you can live up to it, now's the time to say so. Sounds good to me. It'll be fun ordering a man around for a change. What about poor Uncle Barney? Oh, gosh, I forgot about him. Well, maybe May can find a job for him, too. What can he do? Oh, he's pretty good at mixing medicine. <laughs> and now I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a slight idea of what's in store at my big show tonight. I have with me four of the fanciest fillies to be found on the frontier. And talented, too. The most personality-laden, beauteous bevy of bells that ever was born. What bells? That one right there is beautiful bell. What? Where in the... Uh, excuse me a minute, folks. Girls! Girls! Well, Say, you looking for your girls? That's right. Well, you're not going to find them in there. They just got a new job at the Paradise Saloon. And with pay. Well, they can't do that. Why, they're my whole show. Without them, I'm no good. I... May thought of that. She needs a bartender. You can have the job. What does it pay? Uh, uh, bartender? Never. A man of my professional standing? An apothecary of the old school? A contriver of perfect panaceas? Well... We'll get that straightened out fast. Fine place for a scientist of my professional standing. Hmm. Tending bar. If the boys at the pharmaceutical college could see me now. Two straight whiskeys, Barney. Okay. Tending bar of all things a man in my position. Hey, Doc. Hey, Doc. I just figured out an angle where you and I can get rich together, make a stake, and get out of this black widow's nest. You have? How? Oh. Look, your patient is going to need medicine, right? Mm-hmm. You prescribe for him, right? Well, you might put it that way. Well, there just isn't any medicine better for anything than my black widow. Hey, what's in this stuff? Well, there's a little of the... the uh, uh, please, Doc. Do you expect me to divulge the secret of the ancients? Revealed to me by a tribal sorcerer? Now, here's the deal. If anybody gets sick, you tell them they need Blackfoot Bomb. I sell it to them, and we split the profits 50-50. Now, how's that for a deal, huh, Doc? You think it's ethical? Ethical? Why, certainly... <laughs> I thought May warned you to keep that poison out of here. What? If I catch you trying to sell that junk instead of ours, I'll... <clears throat> Hi, Dora. Where's May? In her office. I was supposed to tell you, Doc. You got a patient. Where? Upstairs, for a store. All right, I'll get my bag. Hey, Doc, this might be a good chance to use some of this stuff. Are you crazy? On my first patient? Uh-uh. Well, how do you like that? Frank Slater, what are you doing in town? Just thought I'd drift in, see if you changed your mind. You mean about throwing in with you? I told you if I made up my mind, I'd let you know. 
Funny, you look like a woman. Fine looking woman, too. But you never act like one. I will. The right time comes. When will that be? When I've made enough money to retire. You can retire soon, May, if you work with me. We'll split. I'm doing all right by myself, Frank. Just look at that total for last month. It's all salted away in the bank. Sure, you've got a good business. How long do you think you're going to keep it? There's a lot of rough boys in this territory. They might decide to move in. What boys? Johnny Ringo, Sam Bass, Wes Harden, or... Or Frank Slater? Maybe. All right, let's look at this, Frank. So you use my information to knock off a payroll or a gold ship. That's right. I get half? Sure. If you don't get my information, eventually it all ends up right here at the Paradise. No, Frank, it'd cost me too much to do business with you. You're making a big mistake. That's enough. All right, May. But you be smart. Get out! All right, May. Oh, here's your patient, Doctor. <coughs> oh, your best sister. That's right. How do you feel? What? Oh, you mean what's the matter with me? Pulse seems normal. But I seem to get this pain right here. And this cough. <coughs> seems to have developed rather suddenly. Oh, it did. Yeah, since I got into town this morning, would you mind sitting up? Of course not. Take a deep breath. Again. There's nothing wrong with you. Oh! But what about my headache? Oh, and this knot right here. Where? That feels better already. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interfere. Oh, that's all right. The doctor was just uh, checking on my health. I'm not well. <coughs> I don't think you have to worry about your sister. No? No. There may be a slight congestion. There is in this room. I'll leave you some cough medicine, and I suggest you wear some high neck dresses for a while. Why? To guard against exposure. You will be back. I might have a relapse. If you over relapse, I'll be back. That was a dirty trick. Well, you said you brought the doctor here to take care of people, didn't you? Well, yes, but that This is a professional call. Did you want him to let me die? We won't go into that. Maybe you just wanted him for yourself. That's silly. Is it? You've been my little sister, and I've fought all your battles for you. But this is different. You're on your own. Every girl for herself. That's fine. I will give you one tip, though. You'll never get anywhere wearing things like that.
theft job this week. Two of our best boys dead. We haven't even got the price of a drink. I just can't understand it. I thought you said that stage was going to be loaded. Well, that's what they told me. They said that. Who said? The girls at the parade. Girls. They... Girls, eh? No wonder. May's smart. She told the girls to give you phony information. What would she do that for? So the money would go through, she could grab it for herself at the gambling tables. Right, Frank. The bank is closing in Silver Creek and moving all the dough to Yuba City. It's a quarter of a million dollars in that bank. When's it go? That's the hitch. Nobody seems to know. Iron May could get us that information. Uh, you might just as well ask the president of the bank. Why don't we get tough with her? She's only a woman. Yeah, they tried it before, and it didn't work. The whole town started shooting at him. Still, a quarter of a million dollars is a lot of money. It's worth another try. You think you can get anywhere with me? Come on, boys. We're heading for the paradise. You stay here till we get back. You've been eating that sourdough so long, you've got a lining in your stomach as hard as cement. That's so. Mm, that's the trouble. It sure is. Now, there's only one substance known to man that will dissolve away that layer of dough and let the gastric juices get to work again. And what might that be? That foot bomb. The old Indian remedy. It dissolves anything. Once you've tried it, you... <laughs> We're first in Acadia, the Golden Gate of the San Francisco Bay. And I sold my heart away on an ever-loving summer's day. Then we went canoeing as we did not as well. We got to watch the seals at play on the Golden Strand, our wonder and on the San Francisco Francisco Bay, that's where I first When I first met Katie at that, that golden gate out on, on San, San Francisco, 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 Francisco Bay. Bay. And she stole, she stole my little heart, a, heart little heart away on that ever-loving summer day. And we went canoeing as we we did a lot of wooing as we we watched the little seals that little seals that play out on that golden strand. I won her hand out on San Francisco. Oh, you frisky Frisco, San Francisco Bay. You're too tough for me, Meg. But it's always a pleasure losing to you. Another hand, H.P.? No, thanks. I'll see you next trip through. You must be making a lot of money. I'm not. Thanks to you. What have I got to do with it? something brewing bigger than this whole town. You can make more money in one day than you can in 20 years. Why not? 
layup. Yeah. Well, hello, boys. Is there anything we can do for you? We're looking for your boss. Oh, there she is. See you later, Bill. Eight to five, it's black. It's been a long time, mate. Yeah. You're looking great. You too. What brings you to Los Mujeres, Woody? Does it? Business here. You've done all right. Mighty nice place. How about you? Oh, Woody, meet Frank Slater. Hi. Give a hand. I still think I can beat you. See you later. Neighbor, if you'd have been riding as much as I have today, you'd know just how dry I am. Now, get it up here fast. Say, don't I know you from someplace? Afraid not. I'm new around here. You say your throat is dry and parched? Drier in a desert in mid-July. You don't need a drink, my friend. I don't. What you need is a soothing elixir, a medicant to assuage the raw membranes. In other words, that foot bomb, the gift of the ancients. Say, I... wait a minute, friend. I bought a bottle of that from you about two years ago. You said it was uh, good for the hair. Well, our product has a money-back guarantee if not satisfied. Uh-huh. Does it have a hair back guarantee? <laughs> well, if, uh, uh, would you settle for one on the house? Hey, Doc. A duet. Uh, you remember your fellow patient from Silver Creek? Sure. Face is familiar, miss, but uh, you were dressed a little different then. What are you doing in Las Mujeres? Well, I rode in with the boss. He's playing a hand over there with Iron Mane. How's it feel? Oh, fine as silk, Doc. He did a real swell job. It didn't slow up your draw any, did it? No. Watch this. Danny, the bartender, got this off of Charlie for me. Pretty slick. You know something, Doc? You ain't gonna get me for a patient anymore. Because nobody's gonna beat me to the draw while I'm wearing the swivel holster. Hand it over. Hand what? That gun and belt. You're not wearing them in the paradise. Listen, sister. Nobody, man or woman, takes this gun unless... Sure. No hard feelings? Of course not. You'll get them back when you leave here. I'll take one. A hundred? You used to deal a pretty fair hand, May, for a woman. Ever hear from Sam? Only that he was in jail. Up to. Who's Sam? Sam Bass. Never told me you knew Sam Bass. I'd like to bump it a thousand. Go ahead. Sam wanted to take over a little enterprise May and I were partners in. We couldn't let him get away with that. Funny thing, right after that, Sam got sent to the pen. I don't imagine he liked it much. No, don't imagine he did. You're called. Three ladies. I was always lucky with the women. Kings and Jacks. Men never did a thing for me. And that's why you set up here in Las Mujeres. Yeah. Here women give the orders. If the men don't like it, they leave. I don't like it. And I'm not leaving. I don't get you, Woody. I told you I came here on business. Want to take over. Take over? Take over what? This place. The whole layout. <laughs> Just like that? 
just like that. And what am I supposed to be doing in the meantime? If you're smart, you'll take my deal after you hear it. I'll keep you and the girls on and pay you well. You pay us? You may not know it, May, but the parade passed you by. Five, ten years ago. The way you operate would be all right. What's wrong with it now? Just one thing. We've got law out here now. I can make more money legitimately than you could ever make your way. Sooner or later, they're going to catch you. Frank wants to protect me from the gunslingers and you from the law. I never realized I was so helpless. I can see you're not very enthusiastic. I tell you what I'll do, just for old time's sake and to prove that I always give the other fellow a sporting chance. I'll play you one hand a stud for the whole layout. Against what? Against what the place is worth in cash? One hand of poker. <laughs> he must be out of his head. Woody, a few years ago, you could have talked me out of anything. But not now. You forget you're in my place, in my town. Why should I play against you? I've got all the aces. Not all of them, eh? I wouldn't have set in unless I had a pretty fair hand. You've got it hid pretty well. I don't see it at all. And now I think it'd be a good idea if you'd get out of town. I'll go, May. But I'll be back when I'm ready to let you see my face. Said your husband lost three hundred dollars. Here's two. The lesson ought to be worth one. Thank you, Mister. First rule, May: never take a chump for everything he's got, or he never comes back. You want to know better than that? When I get you home, I'm going to teach you another lesson. But I thought a full house beat four of a kind. <laughs> oh, Charlie, please. What do you mean by making a play like that in my place? If you think I'm going to give that money back to you, you're crazy. Why is your money from our little game, May? Hi, you doc. I thought you were headed for Kansas City. I was, but something just happened to bring me to Las Mujeres. I see. Well, keep the pills rolling, Doc. Come on, Bill. Goodbye, May. For Here, now. my hard work. So long, Doc. So long. So that's the way you operate me. Taking a poor chump who didn't know one card from another. You should have listened to Woody, Doctor. Just take care of the sick. I am. This whole setup is sick. You're sick, May. Why don't you give it all up? Settle down to a nice Listen, decent... Listen, Sawbones, if I want any advice, I'll ask for it. You stick to pushing pills. That's your racket. This happens to be mine. For medicinal purposes. Soft, May. I'm just losing your touch. You should never let that guy get out of town. Or maybe Woody isn't just any guy. No reason to shoot him just because he came in here and put up a bluff. No? And what makes you so sure he was bluffing? I know Woody. And I know you. 
Do you know what I think? I think you let him go because he... Oh, get out of here! Sure, May. I guess we haven't anything to talk about anyway, except... Maybe that Silver Creek job. What are you talking about? The town's folded. They're shipping all their assets to Yuba City. So? So maybe there's a quarter of a million dollars we can split. I'd like to grab it. I need some information. That shouldn't be hard. Send one of your men to Silver Creek. I've done that. Couldn't find out a thing. Nobody knows when it's going out. They don't even know how it's being shipped. Now, you could get that information. What if I say no? Then I'll do it alone, even if I have to take the whole town. You've got 12 hours to make up your mind. And... So long, sweetheart. Might have trouble, Frank. Sam Bass at the hideout. The hideout? Yeah, he's got information about the Silver Creek job and he wants in. Well, that's the story, girls. As I said, every dollar we've ever made is in that Silver Creek bank. And that goes for our customers, too. If Slater and his boys grab that shipment, we're finished. We ought to be able to stop him. Not with guns, Dora. Beth, ride over and tell Frank I've got the information about that shipment. Tell him to bring all his men. We're going to celebrate our new partnership. All right, rest of you girls get back to work. Say, May, when is that shipment leaving? I haven't the slightest idea. Horses are ready, Sam. It's about time to go. Frank will be showing up in Placerita any time now. Let him wait. It'll do him good. Besides, he needs us more than we need him, too. I was looking for Frank Slater. What was it you wanted to see Frank about? Well, uh, you can tell me. I'm, I'm his new partner. Well, I was told that... Didn't you boys see you're making the girl nervous? Head out for Placerita and tell Frank I'll be there as soon as I can. to introduce ourselves. My name's Bass. Sam Bass. Will you tell me where Frank Slater is? Iron May wants me to be sure. I've heard about Iron May. I've heard about how well she's been doing. I've also heard about her pretty girls. Oh, come on, a pretty girl like you shouldn't struggle. Come. So rough. <laughs> Sam, your boys tell me you've got news. 
You've changed, Slater. Not like the old days. You're all business now. Let's have it. We'll visit later. What's on your mind? The Silver Creek job. I know all about that, but when? It's leaving town tomorrow at daybreak. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> for weeks I've been trying to get that information out of Iron May, willing to cut her in for 50%. <laughs> and you come along and dump it right in my lap. <laughs> Uh, won't she be surprised? Hey, how come you're so big-hearted, cutting me in? That's simple. I just got out of jail. I don't have enough men. I need your boys. Everything all set? Yeah, still daybreak. By the way, a Cripple Creek. There'll be about six guards. You better get going. Who was that? He'll be driving the stagecoach. Hey! <laughs> now, the practice of the apothecary's art. What's going on? Get back! Get back! Get back! Get her upstairs! Please, folks, stand back. Please, give me that. She's coming out of it. I wanted to. But... What were you doing, riding around the country all by yourself? Are you all right, honey? I couldn't find Frank, May. I ran into some men and then... Who were they? The leader was Sam Bass. Sam Bass? He said Slater was his new partner. Now we know where Slater stands. Listen, Beth, what else did Sam say? How many men did he have with him? Did he say that he had... Why don't you leave her alone? Can't you see she's in no condition to talk? I told you once before to stay out of my way. May. The stagecoach leaves at daybreak. It doesn't give us much time. Get downstairs and tell the girls to stand by. We'll show Slater and his boys a real surprise. But May... Why don't you jump, Ellen? Everybody else does. What do you mean? I've watched you with these girls. You've done your best to make them hate men, because you think some guy gave you a bad deal. Shut when up! When I'm finished, May, up to now you've run this town and bluff. This time you're up against real guns. It's a man's game. Let me give you a warning. Let the law handle it. I will. You see, I'm the law. Come on, Beth. She's not leaving. Who said so? A mere man. I'll expect you downstairs in five minutes. You're not going, Beth. I must, Bob. I owe it to me. I've got to help her. You don't have to help her. You're afraid not to go. That isn't so. I. There's such a thing as loyalty. I'm sorry, Bob. I'm not going, Beth. I walk up to this tough gunslinger and I said, uh, John Ringo, this town ain't big enough for the two of us. You're nothing but a low-down, bushwhacking, sidewinding dog. When I said the word dog, he tried to sneak a shot at me. Well, I'll be doggone. What, what, what happened? What happened? Excuse me, mister. Uh, would you help me out in a little exhibition of gun drawing? That'd be a pleasure. What do you want me to do? Well, when I say the word dog, you try to beat me to the draw. Do the best you can. Okay. John Ringo. You're nothing but a low-down, sidewinding, bushwhacking dog. You sure you waited till I said dog? You want to try it again? Well, uh, maybe we better have a drink here. Say, that's uh, mighty fancy hardware you got there, uh, Mr. Uh... Ringo. John Ringo. 
Now, did I understand you correctly? I'm to draw when you call me a bushwhacking dog. Yes, sir. Well, what are you waiting for? Get the calling. Well, you know, Mr. Ringo, there comes a time in every man's life. Hey, Bill. Be right with you. On me, Mr. Ringo. Three fingers, bartender. Yeah, yes, sir. Three, 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 three fingers. You, 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 you got it. I'm, 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 you, there it is. This place is real dead now. There won't be enough left to change a $5 bill when that money shipment leaves town. How did you know about that shipment? Well, I got ears. Now, in the old days, that coach... Oh, it's gonna be a coach. Yeah. Like I say, in the old days, that coach wouldn't have got five miles down the road before we'd have had it. That was a long time ago. Today, there's easier ways. And safer, too. Them, uh... Safer ways don't seem to work with Iron May. Maybe not. I still say shoot up the place. Them dames will start fainting all over the place and May will have to sell. I got a plan of my own. Just as clean, as quick, and no gunplay. But Woody. No gunplay. How soon? They left at daybreak. They should be here in about a half hour. <laughs> Bet this is the first time in history a bank's ever been held up without going near the place. You men get that thing off the road. We got to get through here. Drop those guns. All right, get off that coach and leave those guns inside. All right, take over. You boys better get in town and report this robbery. Well, what about you? Oh, I'll be all right. Besides, I'd slow you down too much. Let me have that six-shooter. All right, get going. Did you have the right information, Sam? I'm not so sure now. Let's ride down the road away. and held us up and took the coach. It's left me like this. Iron May. I don't like stupid people. At least we know who's got it. That's something. Sure, let's ride. Wait a minute. She'll be expecting us. Just give her a little more time. What for? She'll feel more secure. All right. <laughs> Relax, boys. Three bags of gold dust seal. Three bags of gold dust. Fifty thousand in currency. We'll have to count that later. That's all of it. I don't know. I sure hope we did right. Sure we did. After all, we had to protect our own money. 
Yeah, but returning the rest isn't going to be so easy. Frank and Sam are sure to be watching every road out of town. All right, honey. Give this to the president of the bank personally. Tell him we didn't want to grab it, but we had no choice. We'll return the rest as soon as it's safe. And honey, stay off the main roads. Say, May, maybe it's safer to uh, let the money stay here. Why return it? Because every thief and gunman in the country will be heading straight for Los Mujeres trying to get away from us. Maybe even a few sheriffs and marshals. We've been able to handle these things before. There's no reason why our luck won't hold out now. I hope so. Say, May, I think you better get downstairs. We've got trouble. Frank Slater? Worse. And so, as I say, it is the duty of every male citizen to give full support to Deputy Marshal Carlson and myself in staging this historic event, the first federal election ever to be held in Las Mujeres. It means, ladies and gentlemen, that after a long delay, law and order has finally come to your community. Law and order. I believe every citizen should be proud and grateful. Deputy Marshal Carlson and I will set up headquarters in the sheriff's office. May. Everyone Look. will have to be registered and identified before the election next Tuesday in order to cast a ballot. The polls will be open from 7 until 7. Well, that's about all. I want you all to vote intelligently. Think long before you cast your ballot. Thank you very much. Hello, Woody. Well, May, so we meet again. The situation here hasn't changed any. Considerably, I'd say. Didn't you hear the judge's speech? Well, Woody, I sort of thought you might be in town. Glad to see you. Thanks, Judge. May, I'd like to have you meet our new federal district judge, Roger Dixon, Miss McLeod. The judge and I are old friends from Silver Creek. How do you do, Miss McLeod? You uh, might glance over this notice. I'd like to post it here, if you don't mind. I told you, law and order would catch up with you someday, mate. Well, thank you. See you later, Woody. Good day, Miss McLeod. What difference do you think an election will make? Quite a bit, I'd say. Whoever wins that election will control Las Mujeres. So what? There are nine women to every man in this town. That's a pretty good majority. Just one thing wrong, May. You see, women can't vote, and they can't hold office. Can't vote? Or hold office. I suppose in time they'll pass a law to change all that. But right now, nobody can do a thing about it. And you knew nothing about this. You just happened to drift into town today. That's right. Well, woman vote or not, there's still a few men in this town, and I'll see that they vote my way. Oh, I forgot to tell you, May. My town, Silver Creek, is on its last legs. And I've been telling all my boys what a wonderful community you have here. I wouldn't be surprised if, come next Monday, a lot of my boys didn't decide to increase the male population of Las Mujeres. They'll make good citizens, too. I doubt if one of them will want to miss voting the election. If I'm not asking too much, who are you going to put up as candidate? Me. I never thought I'd see the day when you'd deal from a cold deck, Woody. I never have. I always gave the other fellow a sporting chance. The other fellow, yes. Not me. My only sporting chance was to have been born a man. I never looked at it that way. Woody. You once offered to play one hand of stud poker for the whole layout. I did, but, uh... We can still play that game. One hand of stud. I win, you support my candidate for office. Then you leave town. You win, I'll agree to the same terms. What about the paradise? You win, I wouldn't want it anyway. Oh, I wouldn't want you to do that, May. If I win, I'd like you to stay on and manage the place for me. I could use a good guy like you. Get a new deck of cards.
Give me a new deck, friend. Hey, what's going on between your friend and me? Just about the biggest game of poker that there ever was. And if May loses, you're out of a job. Not May. Dylan. First card down, right? King for Woody, Queen for May. Are you sure you shuffled these things, Woody? Three queens so far. Should have dealt that one to yourself. You know something? I'm kind of pulling for Woody. He paired up. Dylan. Whatever you say. Two pairs. You got them with me. Make it a good one, boss. I'll do my best. Not much choice there. It's up to the whole cards. No use turning those cards, May. You both lose. I don't follow you, Slater. Brought along an old friend of yours, Sam Bass. It's been a long time, May. Eh? Woody? Well, it looks like I get to settle some old scores. Besides picking up a quarter million dollar jackpot at the same time. Mighty nice. There's nothing you can do. Got my boys lined up all around the place. <laughs> Got you cold. What's your play, Sam? You might just as well turn that bank shipment over right now. What shipment? Quit stalling me. I'll give you to the count of five. And I'm not fooling. One, two, three, four. <laughs> shooting, mate. Yeah, for a woman. office up there. That's where the money is. Chuck! You got that little surprise ready? All set. Let's go. Barney! Do you suppose he's been shot? No, he's just fainted.
What are you trying to do? Poison me? out the window. Take care of that one. I think you'd better turn over a new leaf. Huh? That shoulder's gonna be permanently stiff. Well, uh, maybe I could learn to draw with my left hand. There's only one way to make sure nobody ever beats you on the draw. Yeah? How's that? Give up guns altogether. I never thought of that. Well, maybe you got something there, Doc. Congratulations, Woody. I know you will do a good job. Thanks, Judge, very much. What about me? There are precedents for suspended sentence and uh, probation, especially for the wife of the United States Marshal. <laughs> How about the new Marshal saying a few words about your policies to the male population? Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate the fact that you've elected me. And as the new U.S. Marshal for this territory, I intend to see that the law is carried out to the letter. Any man committing a crime can expect fast justice. How about the women? That goes for the women, too. This country has been run long enough by women. From now on, it's going to be different. <laughs> Woody. Yes, dear? We're late for the McHenry's birthday party. Why don't you stop talking? We're late. Well, uh, you folks understand how it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> We've been invited, too. Come on. <laughs> 